Hello, So You Think You Can Dance fans. I'm Gold Derby Senior Editor Daniel Montgomery here with uh, Susan Wazina and Denton Davidson, uh, who is with us on the Slugfest for the first time, but hopefully we'll see you again next year uh, if So You Think You Can Dance is back for Season 17. Um, we're here to talk about the winner uh, of So You Think You Can Dance, and that is, drumroll please, Bailey Munoz. Um, no, no, you have to say Bailey, Bailey, Bailey. That's how you call him. <laughs> <laughs> well, people who aren't as familiar with the show might think that he just has three names over and over right. again. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, Bailey, Bailey Munoz. <laughs> His well, Mary were very herself said he's the Rudy of season. Yeah, he definitely had the strongest rooting factor. He was the most versatile. <laughs> um, so... I felt like that it wasn't a foregone conclusion, but by the end it felt like there was a pretty strong groundswell of support for him. And then Mary, uh, Mariah uh, Russell finished second, uh, Gino Cascuela finished third, and Sophie Pittman finished fourth. I felt like first and fourth were pretty guaranteed, but the who, how two and three would shape out felt like more of a mystery. Uh, what did you think about that? Yeah, how that ranking uh, came out, Denson? Um. I wasn't really surprised. I thought it would be close. And Kat did say in the uh, results that 1%. second and third were less than 1%. So it was very close between those two. Um, I guess I thought Gino was going to get second um, just based on how the season has gone. But I'm not surprised that Mar Mariah did as well as she did. I would like to know, she didn't mention how much Bailey won by, which makes me think it was probably a lot. Uh, there was one... There was one point where the crowd was chanting Bailey as other contestants were on stage with him. So I felt kind of bad. I felt, I felt kind of bad for the other ones because I mean it, it was pretty obvious by the end what was about to happen. Yeah, if second and third were that close together, I imagine like it was it was it, like there was a, a Bailey contingent and then there was a not Bailey contingent, and so one percent split between them was just whatever was left of the pie. Um, so yeah, I would imagine that Bailey was pretty uh, substantial uh, in his victory. Uh, what did you think about it, Susan? I wanted Gino win because I think he win he second. A, you mean. What win second? You mean yes? Because <laughs> I know win, you win. No, yeah. I'm sorry. I, my, yeah, I know because I, I know you, my I, adjectives I, were wrong. Yeah, because I, I, yeah, I know you've been rooting for Bailey, so I wanted to clarify. Second, because I think Mariah was. Pretty much what she was the whole season, which was good. But he had to kind of add some pizzazz to himself and not just be in his head. And I think he did a very good job in a way that Jordan didn't quite do all the time when she had more lighter routines, I think. And um, I mean, that girl from Ipanema, I could watch that every day and be very happy. So I like, you know, the. Don all Connor, Gene Kelly, Fred Stair, dancing together, whatever. I think it's great. And they don't do that nearly enough. Yeah, I really um I really liked how Gino was progressing over the course of the season. That's one case where I think how short the season was really yeah. benefited Mariah for that runner up slot because <laughs> she peaked earlier. Like her her first couple of live show dances uh were phenomenal. Um and then as the season started you know, getting to the end, Gina was starting to rise and starting to peak, and that girl from Ipanema number that you mentioned was a high point. I felt like with another one or two weeks of live shows, he would have crossed that 1% threshold and been the second place finisher. I don't know if anyone could have beaten Bailey, you know, short of him having some kind of Christy Brinkley style mishap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? Just a relative coming in. <laughs> yeah, just one of his parents will just dance the last couple of shows. <laughs> <in the season. laughs> um, and, uh, you know, what were some of your other favorite moments of the uh, of the finale? Uh, I didn't have a chance to watch the whole thing because, uh, you know, Monday was Dance Dance Revolution Night with So You Think You Dance and Dancing with the Stars. Um, uh, so what were some of your highlights, uh, Denton? I know Bailey performed uh, 73 times or so during the two hours. I mean, if that didn't give anything away, I mean, everyone's favorite performances had Bailey right. in them. Um, right. But one of my favorites, my favorite one of Mariah specifically was the 
first performance of the show that um, was Tempo by yeah. Lizzo. Um, to me, that was the one performance all season where Mariah kind of outshined Bailey when they were together. To me, that was her best piece. Well, so yeah. that's kind of what put her on the map. She patented the torque split. Yeah, I mean, she <laughs> nailed it, though. I mean, I mean, she could have failed and she succeeded. So, um, so that was my favorite but moment of... Am I wrong? Did they change the vehicle? I don't know if I noticed. Oh, we were no, looking. Very good. <laughs> if you're paying attention to the model of motorcycle, then they're not doing this. It's an all-terrain vehicle this time. Oh, it was an all-terrain vehicle? It's very sexy. Oh. Armored. I think it was a motorcycle last time. Yeah. Yeah. So they just what? <laughs> <laughs> Traded it in for that? <laughs> they must have. They must have had to return the motorcycle. They, it was a rental. Right. But, um, <laughs> I like the opening number because it was well lit. Because it seems like every opening number, I don't know who's dancing half the time because it's all this moody lighting and everything. Like the cats one, I didn't know who who was up. <laughs> <laughs> Just thank goodness they weren't made up as cats. Yeah, we well. were very scared about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you know the yeah, you know, all the top ten uh, got to come back uh, and perform. Was there anyone who you wished you had seen more of, Susan? Who you know who? My, yes, I guess, Eddie but, the <laughs> Tapper. He got to <laughs> tap everyone. for like you maybe you know when maybe oh. Hmm. 45 seconds? I don't know. And, you know, they had Gabby there, and then they don't use her for tapping. They use her for temporary now or something. I don't yeah, know. a duet with Eddie and Gabby would have been great. Yeah, we um, were hoping for that, but not to be. And, yeah, Eddie got the short stick, you know, because he was yeah. soon. He couldn't even tap again. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how, you know, Gabby made history as the first and so far only tap winner of the show. But whenever they bring her back, it's hardly ever to actually do tap, like maybe once or twice. But uh, uh, every time this season, it was doing some kind of contemporary routine. Uh, and she's that versatile, so it's not that she's bad at it, but it's like, you know, yeah. she's a tapper, let her tap uh, from right. time to time. It would be like if, if they brought back Bailey as an all-star at some point, and all he was doing was contemporary. <laughs> it's right. like, okay, he's good at it, but it's not, you know, what he, you know, what his specialty is. Uh, I, I did, he's another one who I think would have benefited from a longer season. Um, if they had gone to live shows with the top 20, uh, audiences would have gotten to know him better, and so one bad uh, jazz funk routine wouldn't have necessarily doomed him the way it did. Because um, I think I think he he's probably more of a, more of a memorable contestant in terms of who people will come away from the season with than say Benjamin Castro or Ezra Sosa. I feel like he he sticks in people's minds. Um, so I would have liked to uh, see more of, of him get a chance in the, in the live shows. Well, he did have a backstory, and he was on a little bit the past season. He just had a more memorable story. But I really liked Benjamin Castro. I wish he would have stayed I, around I, longer. I, I thought because... he was easy for my eyes. So. <laughs> yeah, but, but his like solo dances were the most explosive. I mean, he was so athletic um, on a different level than some of them, I thought. Uh, so I was... I guess surprised that he went home as early as he did. I don't think his partnership worked out great for him. Yeah, he was with uh, Anna Lindstroth, and she was she was another one who I, I've always felt like was one of those contestants in the top ten who was fine at everything, but I was never wowed. And I I don't think the two of them ever had a routine that really served them both incredibly well. She she also always looked very annoyed with the judges. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, she was not happy to be critiqued, and she didn't seem to take it well. And I don't think viewers respond very well to that. I don't think people were sympathetic to her. Yeah, I, I was surprised that first week of the live shows, uh, especially, because Stephanie did so well. Stephanie Sosa, she's one who I thought, if, she, if they had kept her around instead of Anna, oh, yeah. Uh, she yeah. might have made it top six, uh, or maybe even stayed past Sophie and made it into the top four if if they just kept her around that one week because she was so good right away. And uh, and then even her second week, 
uh, the night she was eliminated, she brought Gino out of his shell with that jive number, which was one of my favorite moments from him. Um, and they, you know, keep him or, well, he wasn't even in the bottom two, but they send her packing and, yeah, so I always felt bad that, you know, Gino and Sophie were like, oh, we're a perfect match. And it's like, we had to, our partners were eliminated, but now we're good together. And it's like, because oh, I always yeah, think we're really good. <laughs> ballroom like that, she probably helped him do that jive. So yeah. it's sort of like she doomed herself <laughs> because he got the same. Yeah, so, uh, so what were some of the other uh, uh, group routines uh, that, you uh, enjoyed particularly from the season finale then? Well, the enough uh, one they had to do again. Yeah, and that was okay, let's be honest. But the one that the best <laughs> one was the three guys Ezra, oh, yeah, Bailey, and Dino. Yeah. That's the best group of team. And I it was thought. nice they uh, had a, a great, like, Ezra's tall, the other one is medium, and then there's Bailey. So it kind of worked <laughs> out visually, too. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't feel like as the season was going along, they were eliminating people in reverse size order. So you ended up with a final four. You ended up with a final four where Gino was the tallest person, which was, I mean, you know, he's he's not he's funny. not tiny tiny, but he's not tall. <laughs> so they got rid of Benjamin, like Ezra Sosa. When he when Ezra Sosa was still in the competition, I'd see the group photos, and he'd be like a head taller than everyone else in there. Um, Maybe that's why they eliminated him, just, you know, to save, so the camera could push in a little closer to the rest of the group. They're all up to half waist. I mean, it's so funny watching her and yeah. all, and they're all, <laughs> they're all about waist high to Kat. Yeah, and Kat Dealey always wear, wears heels, which, uh, which uh, just makes it all the well, more dramatic. When she had that top knot, the, the one in week, it's like, okay, lady, you're pushing the limit of... <laughs> <laughs> you're you're already tall. What are you doing with that? <laughs> and uh, what did you think about uh, the judging this season, we, uh, Jensen? We had two new judges uh, with Lorianne Gibson and Dominic Dietrich Sandoval. Uh, one is a, a an experienced choreographer. The other is a so you think you could dance alum. So they both have plenty of expertise and experience. Uh, you know how did how did you yeah. think they did this season? I really liked them a lot. I thought Lorianne was great. I liked how passionate she was. Um, she was the one that really pissed Anna off most of the time, I think, uh, with, with her critiques. Uh, <laughs> but, um, and Dietrich's is funny because I was kind of like, oh, like I didn't know how he would be at the beginning, but he's a really likable uh, addition Sweet to the show, I think. Yeah. But um, he so, I mean, was able to say yeah. negative things without, you know, being mean about yeah. it and, and help, more helpful than not. And, you know, Vanessa Hudgens, she's cute. I think she's talented. She would just say whatever he said, you know, whoever yeah. was next to her. Oh, you just said what I was going to say. It's like, really? Come on. Yeah, yeah. And she... And she <laughs> And Vanessa Hudgens was very, uh, very hesitant to give any marked criticism. You know, she was always very uh, something you know, to say that was sort of nice, like very much daily. There were a couple of there were a couple of weeks I remember with um, with Vanessa Hudgens where she'd look, you know, after the program, she'd be like, "You look amazing tonight." It's like, oh, she must have hated it if that's the only nice right. thing she could think of to say. Uh, yeah. but they, uh, they, 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 these two judges, I really like the balance. They, they have a lot of personality, but they're not all personality. They also give, you know, reasonable right. critiques. Um, they, they're, you know, really kind of engaging and charismatic, but also, you know, t tell it like it is in a way that's not Simon Cowell crushing or, you know, Vanessa Hudgens, very rah, rah. Everything is nice. Every, you know, everything is awesome. Um, uh, so I really did like this cast of, of judges, uh, Although tonight. We, when we talked to Mary Murphy, <laughs> I brought up the fact, I didn't think she did, gave out the hot tamale train too often this season. And I said, but there was a lot of sauce and she laughed, but I think she was kind of mad that <laughs> Food reference was being overtaken by Lori and sauce. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, see, there was there was too much sauce on the track, so it derailed the train. Yeah, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, and you know we had a lot of interesting work by choreographers this season. That's one of the 
uh, things, you know, we just, uh, as we're recording this, are a few days off of the Creative Arts Emmys, and So You Think You Can Dance has won choreography 11 times, not this year, but it got two nominations for Travis Wall and Luther Brown. So every year it's, you know, a, you know, half of my eye is looking at who gets the, uh, you know, who gets those So You Think You Can Dance slots, two, three, four, five, however many choreography nominations they get next year. I think Luther Brown did tons of great work. I think he's getting back in next year. Um, I think, I think I mean, Mandy and Elizabeth, I think, for the the, the slide. Yeah, that That's was great. I love that attention. prop. That's That was great. Because they used to use doors all the time. Remember that? And so they'd be slamming them and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I agree with Luther Brown. You know, some seasons there's hip hop on there. And it's. I think they know that audiences like hip hop. Yeah. But there's been a lot of like bland hip hop routines and I thought they did really well this year, especially Luther Brown with, with the routines that they put together. Yeah, and I think uh, Luther Brown was the tempo routine, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So well. that's 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 one for an Emmy reel right there. Um, yeah, I, I also, loved um, Juice from last year. That I, I don't know why, it just was something like a <laughs> It was just great. And I liked the yellow and all that, but anything with Twitch I also like. How did he never win? I mean, yeah, I don't know. And that one thing he did with Alex Wong, that out of your head, I watched that like I swear ten times in a row. I don't do that anymore. I don't have time. But <laughs> like, playing and playing it, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> It's, Ray Leeper yeah. had a good season too. Ray Leeper had yeah. had a lot of good routines this season, so he could come up for sure. And the Broadway ones, Tasty Oreo used to be really broad, you know, too corny Broadway. And I think um, he, the guy who does them now is a little more sophisticated about it, and that's so over the top. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember um, the. Uh, uh, routine that Sophie Pittman did to, um, uh, you know, for top four perform week. Uh, that I remember uh, Dietrich was like, that's that deserves an Emmy nomination next year. And that was Talia Favia. I didn't feel that way about that uh, particular routine, but Talia Favia has done a lot of work and she hasn't been nominated yet. So, um, which is kind of surprising because if you're a choreographer and dancing, with, uh, so you think you can dance, it's almost hard to avoid an Emmy nomination, at least at some point, uh, if you're there for long enough. Um, so she's another one I'd watch out for. I think they have a lot of, of potential in that lineup uh, to, to and, and yeah, Travis Wall, I think, is always safe bet no matter what he's doing because um, he's been nominated nine times, so he's very well known to them. And he had a, the that, top, uh, that topical... Uh, enough routine, which uh, I I imagine will be on his uh, reel next year. Uh, so now that season 16 is over, um, is there anything you can think of besides maybe, you know, expanding the season, uh, you know, go to live with top 20, as we discussed earlier, that you would do differently, that you would change more of this, less of that, uh, Denton, anything? I have one big thing, the end. What, like, they're like, Bailey wins, and then the, it's over. I mean, I wanted to see Mary have a meltdown. I wanted to see his family. <laughs> I wanted to see the crying and the celebrating. I mean, they just cut it right off. And, I mean, it's two hours, and they there was a lot of filler in there. Um, it would have been a nice to have just two minutes of watching the confetti fall and seeing the celebration. Yeah, and especially with Bailey performing so many times, it's like, okay, we're running short on time. He's probably going to win, so let's cut one of his 70 routines and so they get a chance to celebrate at the end. <laughs> well, I did do an item asking about the non-dancing portions, like the, when she was mocking, you know, Lori Ann's um, uh, use of language. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, Dietrich's uh, little crying spells and all that. I mean, I don't know why he cries because they're not moving. I mean, it's not these, you know, very moving kind of, you know, crisis, you know, kind of routines that he's crying. Oh, he just is crying because they're good. <laughs> you know, I used to like when they, I, it might help some of them if they did change up the partners a little bit. I, I mean, what if you 
you can't they don't, can't control their partner. What if they don't have the best partner? Um, so I think I think that hurts them right off the bat. If there is not chemistry that first week or two, that could ruin your whole season. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I, I, I understand why they do it the way they do it because having uh, you know two people dance together for a long period of time and getting to know each other, uh, that's I mean that creates a really good dynamic to get to watch on TV to see these you know these two people grow into their partnership and and into their uh, relationship as dancers. Um, but it is you know a little bit unfair like in the sense of the luck of the draw that's something that the dancer can't control and you know you can either get incredibly lucky and have bailey and mariah get matched with each other minute one um and literally they were the first performance on the first live show so like everything was going their way from the very beginning and then you have these teams that aren't necessarily as well matched to to each other uh you know either you know, you not like not necessarily dislike each other, but just not quite as you know they, they don't flourish together in the same kind of way. Um, so yeah, I would have liked to see Stephanie with someone else. I would have liked to see uh, Ezra get you know chance to change partners a bit. I, I would have loved to see his dynamic with say a Mariah or a Matt or a Sophie. Uh, who we didn't get to and see. Some of the other contestants would have had more of an advantage, I think, because Bailey might have struggled partnering with some of the taller girls. I mean, he, him and Mariah were paired together. Enough with her. Her. <laughs> <laughs> so it might have worked out for the other contestants a little if they challenged Bailey a little more. Well, yeah, I, I yeah. That was his Waterloo. I, I <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, if they had if they had paired Bailey with say Madison one week, that would have been. Like in the, you know, what I would have loved to see is pair Bailey with a taller female dancer, and let's say they're doing a, a ballroom routine. Have her lead. Um, <laughs> one, it'll be around. it'll be fun to watch. It'll be you know just this fun role reversal to get to see. And two, it'll probably be more comfortable for both because just having the taller partner lead, uh, Bailey can do anything. So like I, he could he could handle like being the following partner without any question i think he'd nail that um and it, and it would be a moment i think it would make a moment for you know on tv which we you know always like to see so so yeah i i do think they should mix it up too um i do hope i mean first of all i don't know if <clears throat> there's any official word on whether it's coming back yet um it's sort of touch and go every year for both this and dancing with the stars now it's sort of like year to year um, and it would be sad, especially to lose both, because, you know, the stars go and the dancers and choreographers go back and forth between the two shows so often that, you know, if they both went, they'd all have to like, they'd all crash up as refugees on the world of dance. Right. <laughs> it's like, please Jayla's let us gonna in. going to win an Oscar, so they might need a few. <laughs> yeah, J-Lo can win her Oscar. She can pass the torch to like Mary Murphy. And then Tom Bergeron hosts, and <laughs> be one happy family. <laughs> one happy family. I mean, we've already have like a Dancing with the Stars. Uh, one of the new pros this year competed in the World of Dance last year. Um, it's and this year, I tell you these shows. Or maybe yeah. maybe Box could create the masked dancer. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'd be able to know Bailey even with a mask on, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I, did, um, I did ask Mary Murphy about my favorite contestant that didn't go on, which was the Lucille Ball of dancing. Oh. And they showed her in um, the clips. But uh, I just thought it would be great to have somebody with a sense of humor because they always go for those sad you know, you're getting off drug addiction, <laughs> you know, the closet, and then you're scared, or, you know, all these, you know, it's a bad breakup, it's like all these heartbreaking things, and then it's like, wouldn't it be fun if it just, I mean, it can be, they usually go sexy fun, not just fun, you know, and she was yeah. just a kick to me, but uh, Mary Murphy did say, well, if we come back next year, so that was a little... Eerie, hearing her say that. <laughs> if they do, maybe she could come back and try again. But she was like 26 years old, so. Well, she's still she, she's 
still theoretically then has more years left to try out than maybe So You Think You Can Dance has on the air, um, because <laughs> yeah. she could compete until 30. Um, I mean, I think the fact should just give her her own show and let her do her thing and not learn anything <laughs> else. Just do that. <laughs> no, sneezing while you're dancing like that, that was like amazing. I never, you know, who thinks of these things? <laughs> Someone like her. Uh, well, with that, um, I want to thank you for joining me, Susan and Denton, and thank you to everyone for watching. Um, it has been a fun season. Uh, it has been a pretty good season, even though a little short uh, once it got right down to it. But uh, fingers crossed for next year, and uh, we will see you then.